Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at Azure CDN and how you can use this for custom domains and SSL termination for applications that are hosted on Microsoft Azure. Today we're going to be looking at Azure CDN and what this can provide for me for my statically hosted websites on blob storage, but it will work for most any website that you have static content for. A CDN is a content delivery network and it's designed to make resources geographically closer to requesting clients. Let's look at an example. Suppose I had a site that was hosted in the United States and a client that was in Eastern Europe. And that client in Eastern Europe makes a request back to that server in the United States. And he then pulls that content back from that server in the United States back to his client. Now this round trip can take you know maybe a second or hundreds of milliseconds because the geographic distance between the client and the server is thousands of miles. And if that HTML page has references to things like JavaScript files and CSS files and images. Each subsequent request has to make that same round trip. So this can significantly increase the load time of a page that is being requested simply because it's geographically located across thousands of miles. So to shorten that, what I could do is put a server in say Western Europe so that that client in Eastern Europe can request resources against that server in Western Europe. And that would, that would significantly cut down the amount of time. And this is exactly what a CDN network does, but it doesn't do it by publishing everything to every server in the world at once. So what it does is with each request, on the first request that's made, it will get the request from a client, say in Eastern Europe to that server in Western Europe. If the resource doesn't exist on that server in Western Europe, it will go back to the origin and make a request against that server and then pull it back to the uh, CDN server. Say in Western Europe, it's going back to the United States. And once it's on that server in Western Europe, it can then return that uh, content back to the client in Eastern Europe and then cache that, that, that content on that server in Western Europe. Now, the first request is the one that has to pay the price of the long, long load times for a given website or web page or resource that is being requested. But each subsequent client, even if it's the original client that's going to request that resource, doesn't have to pay that price. Say you had a a client in Africa that wanted to make a request to that same website that's originally hosted in the United States, he can make a request to that same server in Western Europe and then get a response back from it with the content without having to go all the way around the world or halfway around the world to get the content. It's just simply were served up off of that server in Western Europe. Now, there are things like cache policies that determine how long a particular resource can live on that server in Western Europe. And after so many hours of inactivity or after so many hours of, of staleness, it will delete the cache on that server and then we'll have to go back to the original server to get that content again fresh. But it, in most cases, for most users, the experience is going to be very fast because they are going to be using a cache copy of a resource rather than the original uh, copy of the resource on the original server. Where this comes into play for our serverless blog project is on pages and posts, and these are a statically hosted website on Azure Blob Storage. Now the architecture for Azure CDNs looks something like this. We have Azure represented by this orange box here, and we have Azure Blob Storage hosted, hosting a static website. And Azure Blob Storage on a static website can easily uh, serve up content strictly from that source. But to put this onto a CDN and also to put on custom domains in SSL, I need to put an Azure CDN in play. Now an Azure CDN is a resource for managing multiple connections that are available to uh, consumers that are gonna be requesting resources from whatever site this is proxying. And to get the SSL, I need to have another resource called a Key Vault. 
Now, a key vault is a way of storing secret data on Azure, such as uh, passwords, connection strings, certificates, and so on. And so what a Azure CDN will do is pull the content from blob storage and pull a certificate that is stored on Key Vault, and then it will publish those out to endpoints. Now the actual certificate itself will publish the uh, the key, uh, private key and public key pair out to the CDNs so that those CDNs will have those available when requests come in. However, it's not gonna pull the entire um, scope of whatever is being proxied from the blob storage account. That is all the HTML pages, CSS, JavaScripts, and images. It will do that on a as needed basis. So when I have my CDN endpoints published, I can then access these from geographic locations, such as the United States from a North American CDN, uh, Great Britain from a European CDN, or Thailand from an Asian CDN. So you have here a complete set of resources that will give you the ability to host static websites, deploy those to a CDNs, have it terminate with a SSL connection, and also have a custom domain through the central resource, which is Azure CDN. I'm here in the Azure portal, and I'm gonna show you the resources I created for this demo. Rather than go through each one of them and create them from scratch, I'm gonna show you what I did to create these because the endpoints can take a while to create, up to a couple hours, because it has to propagate uh, the SSL certificates to those endpoints. And sometimes that can be quick, or sometimes it can take a while, depending on the state of Azure at the moment that you're deploying this. So the first thing that I want to look at is the actual published site. And what we've already looked at in a previous video is how to actually host a static website on Azure Blob Storage. Now, with this, I have this endpoint, this uh, HTTP endpoint right here. Now, if I take that URL and I open up a new tab in my browser, I can paste that in and I have my site here. I have a couple of demo posts that I've already uh, published using the APIs I've written. Now, because I have this already uh, published, I can actually expose Blob Storage one of two ways. I can either do it through uh, Azure CDN and use Blob Storage as a back end for that, or I can actually use what they call a custom origin, and uh, that custom origin can be anything, any kind of website, and that can include a Azure Blob Storage backend, which is already published as a static site, which I'm going to go with the second option, the custom origin, because I'm already publishing it to that static website on Azure Blob Storage. So I will end up creating a endpoint for this URL. So let's go back to my resource group here, and um, I'm going to look at what I did to create this. The first thing I need to do is get my Key Vault stood up. Now, Key Vault is a resource on Azure, as I said, for managing secrets on Azure. And uh, the Key Vault itself gives me the ability to put things like connection strings and passwords and other things in this that I can access securely from applications. Uh, and the one I'm going to be most interested in is certificates. So with a Key Vault, once I've deployed the resource, I can go to generator or I can import a certificate. And I imported a certificate and I imported a PFX file that was uh, for my domain name. So I'm going to be calling my blog uh, blog.blaze.net. And so I have a wildcard shirt for blaze.net. So anything that's a subdomain of blaze.net, I can use that cert for. And I have that PFX file on my local drive. I just browse for it and I can supply the password. And then that will be added into my key vault, which I've already done here and which is this uh, certificate right here. And uh, it's uh, to create this, I've actually used a service called Let's Encrypt, which allows you to have free SSL, uh, free certificates, and uh, those are recognized by most browsers and they're, they're signed and they allow for wildcard search. So I just took the one I currently have and uh, created a PFX file for that and uploaded it to uh, this particular um, key vault and then I can use this for my CDN. Another thing that I need to do for this is f create a service principle that can be used for uh, my CDN. Now 
a service principle on Azure is uh, like a service account in Windows. It gives uh, a certain level of credentials uh, access to resources on Azure. So these are used for logging into uh, Azure rather than using a user account. I can use a CDN uh, service uh, service principle or or any other service principle, and it acts like a service account here. And so I can run this uh, command called new uh, AZ80 service principle, and then I specify an application ID for this. And this GUID right here, I didn't make that up. This is available from Microsoft, uh, this application ID. Uh, and what this is, is the Azure CDN application. So what I'm allowing for is a service principle to use this application ID right here, which is a GUID. And that is part of the Azure published documentation. I will link this documentation in the video description below once I'm done so that you can get this GUID in this command and then run it inside of the cloud shell using PowerShell. And so I'll run this PowerShell command then actually create that service principle. Once that service principle is created and I have my key vault created, I have my certificate uploaded to that and everything is ready to go, I need to create an access policy inside of my key vault. Now to do that, I can add an access policy to this and all I have to do to for this access policy is assign two permissions, secrets permissions and certificate uh, management options are for the get option. And then I come over here and I can search for that uh, CDN inside of my list of users here. And um, I have Microsoft Azure CDN there. And once I have selected that, I can create that policy for it. I've already done this, so I don't re need to recreate that policy. But um, once I've created that policy, it'll show up right here. And uh, I, ha it'll, I have the permission set as needed. I don't need any more permissions than that. So once I have that done, I can then use this certificate with my Azure CDN. Now, coming back into my CDN, I've deployed this resource already. And um, once this populates, I can show you the endpoint. Now, to create an endpoint, uh, as I mentioned, I, I can come in here and specify one. If I wanted to create a new one, I could call it Blaze1, and then it would assign Azure Edge.net to that. I can choose storage as a backend for it. That would be my static content that is hosted in a blob storage account, or I can use a custom origin. And my custom origin is the, the URL that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm going to be using this host name here for this particular custom origin. Now, or I could specify the blob storage account for that backend. Um, but if I'm going to be using the existing static host that is already exposed, I want to use the custom origin for this. And I want to use, only enable HTTPS for that. And it's optimized for general web delivery. And then once I hit add, it will add that endpoint. Now, I've already added this endpoint here, and it's already running. So once you have the endpoint exposed, you can come into this endpoint and configure what they call a custom domain. Now, the custom domain is where I can plug in a domain that looks like this. And I've configured this custom domain here. So to add in a custom domain, I would um, have a back backend. That's one of those endpoints I created. And then I would have to put in my custom domain. So if I created another one, blog1.blaze.net, what I would have to do is go into my um, DNS uh, settings for, this is going to error out because that's not going to validate, but uh, blog one uh, blog.blaze.net would validate, uh, although it's already being used. That's what it's going to tell me. Um, what that will do is I have to create a CNAME record in my DNS entries on whoever my DNS registry is for this particular custom host name against this backend uh, host name here. So I would be creating a CNAME for blog.blaze.net that is C uh, alias to this blaze.azureedge.net. And once that is done, it will validate this against that, that registry, and then it will allow me to use it. And I've already created this, so my host name is already deployed to this guy. And once I have that configured, I can actually turn on HTTPS. And this is where I can connect my uh, custom domain name to the certificate that I uploaded to Key Vault. And I turn that on and then I can say use my custom, uh, my own certificate, or you can use one that it creates. Uh, and it'll just be billed back to you uh, using a 
third party um, uh, certificate authority, or you can use a Let's Encrypt certificate, which is free. And uh, you can come in here and configure this to use uh, Key Vault. You specify the secret or the certificate you want to use, and then it gives you the version. And then once you click save, it then will propagate across all the uh, various endpoints on the Azure CDN. And it's this step right here that can take a while. Certificate provisioning, uh, so, uh, that, and this can take a couple hours to do. That's why I'm showing you what I did here step by step rather than actually doing it because uh, once this is created, it takes you know two to three hours to propagate. Sometimes it can happen in as short as five minutes. It depends on whether or not it's new or the, how, what the state of Azure is and among other, a myriad of other variables. And once it's complete, then that means you're ready to go. So with that in mind, I can then come back over here and look at my endpoint and it's created. And it's just going to take me back to where I was, uh, where I was a, a second ago. Now that everything is ready to go, my SSL certificate has propagated to the CDN endpoints. I can hit my endpoint here. I can copy this or I could just type it in. It's fairly easy to do. Um, I'm going to go over here and uh, take this out of full screen mode, open up a new tab in my browser, and then paste in the host name with HTTPS and pull up my website here. Now this is now hitting the CDN instead of the actual source that this is coming from. This is the actual blob storage here that this is loading from and this is the CDN it's loading from. So uh, this is going back to this source here but either in either case I'm able to use the Azure CDN to proxy essentially that back end static website that's hosted on blob storage to provide closer endpoints to my clients. Now, if you had a very busy site, this would be something you could do. Or if you just wanted your page uh, time, load times to be faster, the, a CDN can definitely help improve that. So next time on Tech on Fire on Blaze, we're going to look at another approach to doing this using Cloudflare and how you can use Cloudflare to proxy a backend website that is hosted on Azure Blob Storage as well. So until next time, thanks for watching this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintel.com com and there you can find about services that Winelect offers including training and consulting services. Also please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.